Right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the morning brief on Tuesday, July 21st. Uh, if you are a newcomer, um, thanks for checking us, checking out the presentation. It's a military fighter pilot review of the market, and uh, it lasts for about 45 minutes to an hour. So thanks for joining us today. Uh, overview of the podcast number, still at 29 episodes, did not get a new uh, version out last night. However, I am doing an interview today, so uh, that will get us to episode 30 and uh, over a thousand downloads, as you can see, off to the right. Uh, remember, if you're a newcomer, you want to open up uh, chat and have both all attendees and panelists selected uh, for that. For our mission objectives today, we're going to grow our money, protect our money, and live off our money. As far as our objective today is we're going to talk about COVID-19's effects on individual bonds uh, out there and individual bond investing. So it'll be a little bit of how that stuff kind of works and how uh, things are affected uh, by it. So that's what we'll talk about today. That's more along the lines of protecting our money or living off our money, not necessarily growing our money. So our tactical objectives today, uh, again, we talked about the, uh, the bonds and individual bond investing. So is the flow overall. We're going to talk about long, short, open, short, long. So we're going to talk long-term investing first. As it gets to within about 10 minutes of the open, we'll shift, we'll shift to some day trading opportunities to see if anything sets up for us. And then we'll watch the market open. We'll kind of finish up the day trading stuff for about 10 minutes after the market open. We'll go back to the long term and answer your questions. Okay, as far as uh, we'll do a market review, we'll go around the world and check out all of the um, market action. And then we'll go do a headline review. And then we'll get into our long term topic before we get into our uh, day trading uh, uh, opportunities there. As far as contingencies, if you have any tech issues, you want to go to steve at ototnow.com. And as far as our uh, individual um, disclaimer, remember everything here in this presentation is investor education only. You have to do your own due diligence before you take action on anything you hear today. All right, let's go up to the TD Ameritrade screen. We'll talk about the SPY in review. So basically, here's a one-year SPY chart. That's the S&P 500 from left to right one year. You can see the big dip in February down into March, uh, the big sell-off, and then the big recovery back from there. Of note, if you look at those two trend lines, we've been talking about those almost every day. Again, those are automatically generated. That shows we are still in a big uptrend. And then, of course, yesterday was a decent a decent day in the market. And then, of course, today is setting up as a significant up day, largely due to events from around the world, not necessarily our, our own market. But uh, we do have some earnings that are, just, are carrying things higher today. So overall, looking pretty good, still in a healthy uptrend. Uh, it won't last forever, but certainly uh, you don't want to fight the trend. So kind of flow with the trend up and eventually the trend will at some point break and before the election is what I'm calling, but we shall see. And of course, we don't know when, uh, but we are going to ride it long as long as we can. All right, let's go over to uh, the five-day review. You can kind of see things stalled out there at the end of last week, that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday period, and then yesterday, a uh, decent move up in the market. And of course, the futures uh, gapping up uh, pretty big. Again, that's from events around the world overnight. All right, over to the calendar. We had IBM earnings last night after the bell. IBM beat earnings. That's like a hallelujah thing to have a new CEO that's been in the chair about six months now. Um, I'm still not excited about IBM, but I'm hopeful that they are not going to be left for dead um, because it looked bad for a long time. That stock was used to be a high flyer. Uh, it's, it's literally been out of favor for a long time now. Um, so this morning, so that was last night. So that was kind of the good news story to kind of keep everything rolling higher last night. And then this morning, the biggest news I saw out there was Lockheed Martin. Um, a really big beat for Lockheed Martin uh, this morning and shares uh, jumped there. Um, so um, good news when the big defense firms are surviving under this COVID-19 scenario that we've been in. So uh, overall, couldn't be happier with that. All right, let's go back down to CNBC. We'll take a look around the world. As the screen pops up, you'll see the futures are all in the green there, uh, over half a percent across the board, which is good, good, good. And then over to Europe. They passed a big uh, stimulus package uh, yesterday, uh, the recovery fund deal out of the EU. So all of that is good news. All right, let's check Asia. Also in the green there on positive vaccine news. We'll look at yesterday's numbers. 
That's what we saw yesterday, big day in the NASDAQ. So you think of market leadership is what we talk about is who's driving the, uh, the, you know, the market higher. Well, yeah, it's all tech. I mean, Amazon was up 8% yesterday on that, on their um, upgrade. And if you have a, if you have a company like Amazon, that's up 8%. It's so big. Again, these are market cap weighted. So that's going to drag the index way higher. Um, so Dow barely up. And then of course the uh, S and P almost a percent. So pretty good day that we're building on from yesterday. And I don't have any reason to expect that today is not going to continue on up. All right. Uh, let's look at bonds. No real change there. Let's go over to oil. All right. Above nice pop in oil yesterday. So again, 4,191, that's the highest I remember seeing in a while. It would be nice to get a little closer to 50, but certainly happy it's above 40. And then over in gold, the biggest thing I saw was that look at that pop in silver. So again, silver was down at 14 going into COVID-19, uh, COVID that February, March timeframe. Dropped all the way down to 11, which is weird because precious metals usually act opposite of the market. And same thing, precious metals are kind of screaming higher. You know, I'm a big fan of silver over gold, um, but yeah, I'm not sure I could go into silver anymore here. So if you had it, great. Um, now nah, I wouldn't buy that going into the election. There's other ways to hedge your portfolio if you're worried about that. Okay, let's go back to the uh, main screen. We'll talk about our headlines for today. All right, so there's the EU two trillion dollar deal. So obviously positive news coming out of Europe. All right, Biden's starting to produce his health care. He also said, uh, I don't know if we'll see it or not. I saw it on another side. He's got his vice presidential price presidential list going. Um, he has four four black females that he's going to choose one of them to be his vice president. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, who he picks. Um, of the four, there's probably one that uh, is the oddball um, if you try to make the names, because um, I don't think they're are necessary for that fit that tab going into that, but it'll be interesting to see who he comes up with there. All right, uh, yeah, we're getting from the Republicans. We're not gonna expect a relief bill until August, which is kind of weird. Uh, hopefully that's not just political posturing, but uh, obviously the biggest issue there is the $600 of a week extra unemployment that runs out really basically Friday. Um, so kind of uh, not good that those folks that are trapped in that situation are gonna go from basically losing 2,400 a month um, that they, they've had for the past few months. And then they'll have to, if they get 300 or re reinvent the 600, they'll have to kind of start all over. So kind of a crappy way to do business for those folks and, and that's obviously gonna hurt. Okay. Let's scroll on up. Didn't see the analyst calling Tesla. I'm sure it's an upgrade because that's all they do, it seems. All right. Continue on down. All right, there's the IBM uh, popping up. Saw that. All right, let's continue on up. Coke out with earnings, didn't see those. Twitter obviously is coming out with earnings. Twitter is a, a tough name to play. I don't like it from an advertising perspective because I think it's not a good platform for it, but um, there's others that think there are. Uh, obviously you've got the Mustang Mach-E coming out, 1400 horsepower, you ought to be able to get to work and back from that with that. But um, off to the right there, Alibaba's uh, Ant Financial, obviously Alibaba's been on an absolute tear. Uh, lately, which is good for us because most of us have it. And the uh, Ant Financial, we'll have to take a look at how that all is going to work out um, once it spins off and whether that's not, whether that's worth investing in itself. All right, let's continue up, see what else. Yeah, I'll close with this one that Suze Orman, a perfect financial storm is brewing. There is a lot of negativity out there right now. I wouldn't necessarily pay too much attention to it, uh, but certainly if you want to pick, pick apart what we're doing as a country and freak out and go and be negative, there are tons of people that are hopping on that bound bandwagon. And if anything, uh, it's interesting, if you go back to like Mark Cuban compared this setup to 1999, right? Of tech leading the market, huge bubble and selling off. But the difference is when you study market crashes, uh, which I have, 
is the sentiment, meaning what everybody thinks about it going into the market crash. If there are negative people out there that are calling it, the more they call it, the less likely it happens. It happens when nobody's calling it and everybody's uh, euphoric and everybody's like, this is gonna last forever. So if anything, it's good to see all the negativity that's out there because that generally means it's not going to happen. So, all right, so that's enough for the day. We're gonna switch over to uh, a new screen for you. You haven't seen this before. Um, and again, I'm gonna drive for a second to show you some individual bond stuff. So I said COVID-19 and individual bonds. And so bonds generally offset, they're diversified for the market. If you want to have a traditional 60-40 portfolio, you have 60% equities. 40% bonds, um, and then when you retire, you switch it to 60% bonds and 40% equities. So that's kind of the you know, investing 101 if you're not even trying to get too fancy uh, sort of thing. But the, uh, the bond portion of that, you can put it in a bond fund, which I don't like for several reasons. I won't cover that today. Uh, I have been putting people into bond funds lately because I want to be able to now pivot that money back into equities after the election. So the reason I'm doing what I say I don't like to do is because I want to keep that money nimble so I can turn it around and flip it. If you get into individual bonds, as soon as you buy it, you want to hold that to maturity to get the maximum value. If you think squeezing blood from a turnip, you want to get every last dollar that that contract uh, has guaranteed you. So that's why you want to hold those up forever. So what you're seeing here is a uh, list of all the bonds. So we'll just go across the top. Everything's got a QCIP number. So do stocks too. You just don't see it. Um, but that's how they track individual shares. Uh, so you have the QCIP number, which is over here. Here's the actual, you have the name of the bond. A 5.5% is the coupon payment. Um, and then it's due uh, February 15th of 2022. Bonds pay every six months. So that means from now until February 15th of 2022, you're going to get a full dividend payment, which will be, this is $20,000 right here. So that means 5% uh, of 20,000 is obviously a thousand. So you get that payment twice a year. So you get half of that twice a year. So it'd be $500 on August 15th and another $500 on February 15th. Until February 15th of 2022, you get your $500 coupon payment and your $20,000 back. So literally that's all that's going on there. Um, some bonds are callable, meaning just like when you have a mortgage and you decide, you know what, I'm just gonna pay this off and you write a check and it's done. Same thing in the bond market at any point in time, if the bond is callable, which most of the ones I invest in are, uh, they simply pay us with the interest that we owed, that are owed up to that point because it accrues daily. And then they pay us our money back and they have to generally pay a premium to do that. So. The price of a, so continuing over, this is the quantity of the bond. So that's $20,000 worth. The price is always measured in a hundred. That's called par value. So a bond that the day this was issued at 5.5%, the value they sold it at hundred dollars. So now interest rates have gone down. So a bond that holds, that pays 5.5% is worth more than new bonds being issued at 100. So that's why you see the price above $100 there. Not significantly, but it is. So there's the market value. That's just simple math of those two. And then this is portfolio management stuff. You'll see the bonds don't really move much, if at all, during the day. And sometimes at the end of the day, they will reset. But a lot of bonds will sit there with no change. These are all yesterday's numbers that you're looking at. Um, so yeah, you don't see a lot of a change anything unless there's a move in interest rates, which we're already at zero. So unless we go negative, which I don't see happening, could, but I don't see it. Um, unless we go negative, that's not gonna change the, uh, the, the price of the bond there. Um, or a credit downgrade or upgrade to the underlying company. So in this case, if Aircastle got downgraded to junk status, then you could see that drop below 100. So and then that, would, that would show a bigger move in a day. But other than that, it's just like when you buy a stock, it's the spot price, it's the last two people on the planet who agreed for a sale, and that becomes the new price. These could be two, two really dumb people paying a stupid price for whatever reason, and that marks a new bond price. So don't get tied up too much, and you don't care because you aren't gonna sell it. So let's talk uh, the last part about any of these, take a look at these top three. 
So the, the price is 162 cents here, 101 and 92.5. Well, each of these, as they approach their maturity date, so like April 15th of 21 for this Helmet Aerospace, on the maturity date, the par value of the bond is 100. So remember, it's a limit function. If you go back to your math days, if it's above the axis, it's gonna come down to 100. If it's a below the axis, it's gonna come up to 100. Again, it's a limit function. At maturity, it's gonna be worth 100. So the only way it's not is if the company goes bankrupt. Um, and then that's a different story. So let's take a look at maybe BlackRock here with a bond. Um, and it does not appear that that's going to share out. So let's see if we can uh, share that individual. Uh, I'm trying to drill in here. All right, thank you, sir. I do appreciate that. So it did work. Uh, so this is if most people don't research individual bonds, but this is what I do to be able, before I get into a name. Obviously, you know the, know the name BlackRock. Uh, you can go over here to the Moody's rating. This one's not, this one's not rated, so not a great example. Um, coupon payments five dollars. It's got all of the information as far as the the bond. This one is callable, continuously callable. Sort of thing. The next time it can be called is twelve twenty three of twenty one, and it's maturity. It's a matures on six fifteen to twenty two, so almost to maturity anyway. And then if you want the uh, Moody's rating, which again we'll have to see if this comes up and share this one out to you. That's not going to work. So we have to go through a good morning. Hello. Um, we'll go back to the other chart there. What we're going to do is take a look at a Moody's report, which is what I will close with. We let's go down to let's General Electric just pick one. So he's going to pick a bond there. He's going to share that screen out while I'm talking. And then, uh, yep, that one. And then here's that Moody's report. All right, pretty good. So I'll drive for a second. So there you get, you have the name of the company and you can see the long-term rating. Again, this is a Moody's rating, which S&P uses the um, AAA. It's more, more common that people talk in AAA bonds, AA and A, those are all A grade, investment grade bonds. Then you have triple B, then you have double B. Uh, so triple B is still investment grade. So those are the top four tiers are investment grade. Double B and below are called junk. Well, this bond is a BAA BAA1, which is actually at that double B level. So this is what this is a fallen angel, meaning it was investment grade bond when I bought it. And now it's not. It's a, it's fallen out of there. It's considered a junk bond, um, largely due to COVID-19. And of course, General Electric had its own issues going into that. Um, I bought it when it had the issues because the price drops. When it drops out of triple A status, or excuse me, triple B status, down to double B, or drops from investment grade to junk, all those investment funds out there have to get rid of this bond. And when they have to get rid of the bond, that means the price drops from 100 par down to like an 80 par. So when that happens, the, uh, the price drops significantly, generally down to uh, 80 cents or so. So anyhow, that's a good time to buy it. So if you want to get into the details, you can get into all kinds of uh, stuff here. Here you can see it used to be an A bond until 2018 and then it dropped down to, to where it is now. And then you get the factors could lead to an upgrade, factors lead to a downgrade, and a lot of stuff if you're interested. Most people aren't interested in that much of it. Okay, so that's your long-term trend for today. Uh, we can talk a little bit more in the question and answer. Again, if you have a question and answer, go ahead and pop that into the Q&A session. So now we're going to go over to the big board at Schwab and kind of take a look at what's in motion today. Um, so my notes from earlier, I want to look at uh, IBM. This would be a long, not sure it has enough steam in it to be a day trade, but certainly uh, I would call this IBM is back, um, which is had been hopeful from the new CEO change, you know, six to nine months ago. Um, got rid of Jenny, uh, Jenny Rometty, and I can't remember the new guy's name, but I was very excited when he took over because um, he's a very cloud-based and if IBM has been a little slow to adjust uh, like everybody else out there. So anyhow, like close at 126 up to 132. I don't even see it hitting 140 today, so it's not really usable for a day trade, but we'll keep an eye on it. Next one is LMT, Lockheed Martin. Same sort of thing, they beat earnings this morning, so it's obviously a good news story. They closed at 365, gapping up to 378, so just a couple of percent there. 
probably not enough to uh, take it on a day trade as far as uh, going north, but certainly as a long-term buy and hold, when you think defense space, Lockheed is what I consider the best pure defense play. I like Boeing uh, as my best of defense play just because it has the commercial side of it too. So two ways to win, which I like out of the stock. Okay, we'll go over to the volume board. Neo back in play, that's been screaming higher lately. You can't touch it. Um, you just gotta let it do its thing. You can trade it if you want. I'm not going to trade it. Uh, silver up 5%. Again, that's, that's kind of interesting. Silver's jumping that uh, significantly. Have gold up a little bit as well. Hopco Health. Doesn't really meet our numbers. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next tab. Again, for our numbers, for the new folks out there, we're looking at, uh, we want 100,000 shares of volume pre-market. So that means there's enough shares in play uh, to be able to get the move that we want. Uh, we also want to have a stock that's gapping up or down that five to 10% is the window. So it's, it's already made a move in a direction and then we're taking it further in that direction. So, uh, but we need it to have a little bit more to room, more room to go. So if you have something that's over 10% already that's moved, sometimes the move is already baked into the pie, if you will, pre-market. So that's why we're looking at those specific numbers there. So there's LMT up 3.36 as we talked about. Um, since it's a higher price stock, again, um, it'll have the volume, but it's a little tougher to get those 100,000 shares or so. You got Amazon in play, it's up a little bit. Google up a little bit. That Direxion, that's a gold index, triple levered. We're not gonna touch that. You don't wanna day trade those sort of things. In my opinion, some people do, but we don't. And Shopify up a little bit. So, okay, nothing that really stands out there for me. Let's look at the downside. Nothing meets our criteria of that five to 10%. Two with volume there. Um, Tesla, we're not gonna touch, of course, but um, Moderna, uh, let's pull their chart. They, were, they went down yesterday. Um, Predator had a sweet trade, what would have come up with 20 some R yesterday, taking Moderna at the two minute point. So up at 98 pre-market. And then if you look at this move down right here into the black, that was Predator's trade yesterday. So again, it's probably the highest uh, R trade we've seen this year, dropping from 87 to below you know, 79 there. And he was out of it pretty quick. Um, so obviously it bounced up. So this would be more of a continuation off the off the bad news that I had yesterday. Uh, I don't mind continuations down. I don't think it's going to go up. So it's not a bad. Uh, we'll keep it on our watch list for a short. All right. Don't see anything else. I uh, let's yeah, it's low volume. So nothing else to touch there. Let's go to our next tab. Fortuna Silver Mines, that's tracking with silver. So is First Majestic. I don't want to touch that. So is the help Hecla Mining. Uh, Callaway Golf, let's see if they're, yeah, let's see short volume. Foot Locker, see if there's a headline associated with uh, Foot Locker. So don't see anything 27 to 29. So it is gapping up a little bit, but no headline to really go off of and hang our hats on. I shares, no, Sassel, no. Mining, 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 man, mining's crushing everything today. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Yeah, Aero, uh, let's pull that chart up. Again, this is a name we talk about at least once a week. Um, on the move higher, 510 up to 565. See if I can find a headline here. All right, EV solution helps support operational issues associated with COVID-19. That's Those are interesting words. I'm not sure what that means. Um, light duty, urban, short haul, electric vehicles. Again, it's right here in Austin. So we can keep an eye on it. It's been uh, certainly been in play, if you will. It would be a long, so it's initial order for new all electric mobile food vehicles. Electric food trucks, maybe? That'd be a very Austin thing to do, wouldn't it? 
Um, so that's a long, we'll keep an eye on that. You could even trade that. I like those numbers. A little low on volume, but I think it'll make up for it. Uh, Pan American Silver, no. All right, so not a lot off of that board. Let's pull up some of the uh, old favorites here. Um, let's take a look at Nikola in KLA. So again, based off of a huge move down, this would be a continuation move short. It's actually bouncing a little bit, but it would be something you could short if you want. Let's take a look at Blink, BLNK. Again, it's been selling off. I would not short it because I think it's a good long-term hold and I don't like the, uh, the setup here. Um, and let's look at LCA, it's Landcadia Holdings. Again, this is the IPO for uh, Golden Nugget Online Gaming. Above 14, I would take LCA long, would be how I would play that. Let's pull up a CCX, I don't think it trades pre-market. Um, CCX, so a couple of you are on the line. We talked about this yesterday. Again, this is the uh, special purpose acquisition company for uh, Topgolf. Now, that's a heavy rumor, it has not been confirmed, but there's enough talk of, of Topgolf IPOing that I think this, this matches up perfectly. So that's why we're in the name. Um, if that happens, again, I think this is pretty much a straight run up to around 20 or so. If it does not happen, then I'll just sell. Um, however, when you think of Churchill Capital, they, are, they're, they call it a blank check company, which is kind of a scary term, right, when you're an investor. But they're collecting a bunch of money. And if they don't, if they don't end up buying Top Golf and taking them public, they're going to buy something else and take it public too. So it's not like the story is completely dead, even if the Top Golf rumor uh, falls through. But that's the latest rumor of the day, so we want to uh, to, to capitalize on it. So you could take a CCX long, um, and I actually might take that today. All right, uh, let's check Luck and Coffee. See if there's any ticks pre-market. Uh, 450 shares have moved uh, pre-market and again moving up just a little bit so it can trade pre-market it just it doesn't because a lot of people are a little bit scared of lucking in the pain train that it's been on but uh, we shall see all right we have three minutes to the open we're going to go back to the TD Ameritrade screen and set it up uh, for my trade I'm going to go CCX long which will pull up uh, CCX on that left screen Let's put uh, our two shorts, MRNA in the middle screen and then NKLA off to the right. So from left to right, it'll be long, short, short. Uh, the short charts are pretty, uh, pretty brutal looking to the downside. So those things are definitely on the move down. Um, but I will take CCX long because I think the market's going to continue higher. Selling off a little bit. Um, NASDAQ futures, I thought they were up... Uh, over a percent earlier, they're only barely in the green. But um, CCX long, I will use a, <clears throat> I will use a 20 cent stop since it's kind of lightly traded. So if you want to put my uh, trade in there, CCX long, 20 cents. I'll take it at the open. And out at, Let's go uh, eight minutes, if you will. There we go. All right, Geech, if you got time, throw a uh, throw a trade in there. Predator is not here today, and uh, Burner fell off. Uh, is not here, right, not in the room right now. So uh, go ahead and throw a trade in there, and we will see what these do. You could take uh, again. I think Moderna probably short is your best bet. J Nug, some gold. If I remember right. So let's put J Nug in place of Nicola there. Nicola, excuse me. All right, J Nug long 40 cents, kind of a tight stop um, for, for a price target up in the 150s. So if you kind of look at that move there, it's uh, basically, uh, it's about a dollar move. So now I would go higher actually, I'd make it a dollar. You have into the bell. Dollar it is, all right. Up. So we'll give you a dollar for the R there. Uh, in at the open, so we'll do JNUG first. There's the open. 
And let's see, we this is a long, we did give it the full dollar, so uh, we can get in there and see if that really hit it right away. So what was the exact open? 153 even. So 153.01. So 152.01. All right, I'm calling you're still in the trade. It's about as close as you can get to a good thing you went to this. Yeah, right. Aha, right, right to that stop. Uh, so we'll see if that turns around and goes long. Let's look at CCX. I said in at the open. So we'll get that drawn up. Not a lot of volume, only 20,000 shares on the CCX. Um, so again, 20 cent is my stop. So we'll draw at 11.54. There, J Nug's getting some love. All right, so that's my lower stop there. If you look at the overall market on the left, though, that's a pretty significant move down. See what the numbers are showing. All right, still showing up right around half a percent, but obviously that's a. Uh, um, Obviously, that is uh, selling off a little bit for the overall market. All right. Jay Nug getting some volume in there as far as uh, same thing with CCX, a little bit slower. <clears throat> Got it. All right. Excellent. Let's uh, let's see. And Moderna. Let's zoom in on uh, Moderna there. That'd have been tough to trade. You'd need almost a dollar stop to stay in any of that there. So again, we're thinking that will roll over short. Uh, we shall see. Let's take a look at some other names. Luckin, because I'm always curious as to what's going on. So we'll look at the middle pane here. Not much movement. Open at 251, sitting at 255. That's not too bad. All right, let's take a look at IBM long. Again, this was off the earnings beat uh, yesterday. Yeah, Luckins, uh, you, you know you know the pain there, Geach. You know the pain. Um, okay, IBM, this would have been a long, not really moving a whole lot from where it was. Again, almost a couple dollar move between those two uh, dojis there. So not something that would be good for a trade. But again, I like this long term for IBM. Hopefully this resurrects them um, as a player in the tech field. All right, let's look at LMT. JNUG's trying to, trying to get stopped out there, but it's still hanging in. All right, LMT in the middle screen. Again, this is long based on the earnings pre-market. All right, JNUG just died there. Died off, so you get the red X of shame. <laughs> Sorry about that. The uh, all right, LMT talking about Lockheed now. That's kind of selling off, so it was up, kind of moving with the market, if you will. So that might have time to go uh, go higher here. All right, uh, Moderna we already talked about, and then Foot Locker FL long. I'd be surprised if this went long, but yeah, not too bad. So open there, it's up in the green at least. That doji down all the way to 28.8, uh, that would have knocked anybody out of a day trade that was in that name. So that would not have worked. Let's look at IRO. Again, that's the Austin-based firm, A-Y-R-O. It's been in play lately, up 10, 10%. That's not that bad. That's 53% move from the, 53 cent move, excuse me, from the open. So that's gonna knock you out of uh, any day trade there. That would not have worked. All right, let's look at NKLA. Okay, Nicola getting a little bit of love. Again, they had their big stock issuing at $40, which was yesterday, I think it's 50 some, um, 50 some million shares that came out at 40. So uh, it'll take a bit to digest that. Maybe it goes back higher uh, today. I'm not in that name now. Uh, I'll have very, very few shares left. Um, but mostly got out of that name uh, yesterday. All right, yeah, a lot of red in the gold, right? Well, it's kind of weird. I mean, it's, it's up 8%, still looking at JNUG in the upper right-hand corner there. 
that's just kind of uh, kind of crazy numbers. All right, uh, let's see my trades hanging in there. I'm in the red. That's not very good. I've got three minutes before I'm out of that trade. Let's take a look at LCA. This was my second choice for going long. All right, 1445 dropped down to 1426. So not a huge moment movement uh, there in LCA. And again, that's the uh, special acquisition company that's behind um, GNOG, the Golden Nugget Online Gaming, which is the Houston owner's uh, company that is being IPO'd there. And let's see, BLNK, nice move up. I like to see that. Holder that name again, EV Battery Company. Let's check out, uh, well, CCX is already up on the left. Not a whole lot of movement in CCX this morning, so kind of surprised about that. All right, let's go over to charts for a second. We'll look at the, uh, we'll open it up to the big, big screen. Let's you do green first, so let's switch it around. All right, Nicola up there, we talked about Tencent holding up 5%. I like that. Lucking up 5%. What? Are you sure that's not a negative 10? It's a green five? Yes, confirmed. We have a winner today so far, four minutes in, right? Uh, RVVTF's a psychedelic name. Draft King has, Draft Kings have been on fire uh, lately, so above 35 there. Looking on the other screen, and it's not jumping out at me where Draft Kings is. All right, 37.30. So again, got, got all the way down to below 30 in that sell-off. So up to 45, down to 30, now up to a 37. So it's retraced that. So it's on a good path. Uh, mineral is Brigham Mineral here in Austin. Neo's getting some love. Coca-Cola beat earnings this morning. That's KO. Uh, Workhorse up. That's another name I like to watch. Southwest Airlines is up. Looks like everybody's taking their furloughs and early retirements and stuff. So they're going to avoid... Um, the uh doing a furlough so if they can avoid that that's huge for the uh, system out there um top golf let's put a uh, ccx in that big screen so um when these things get talked about so again this is a five day-ish type chart uh to where it's now starting to pick up some trading volume if you will if you can look across the bottom you see those big um blue lines so the um you know, that was yesterday where it actually had a bunch of volume roll in. And again, I was in it uh, pretty early yesterday. So uh, we talked about it in the morning brief. The, the answer to your question is I don't know, and they won't tell anybody. Um, so two things have to happen first. They have to announce that they're actually going to do that. Right now, it's just rumor. But Barron's came out. Uh, Barron's comes out on Sundays. And you get I get, you know, the alerts as to what's going on in the world. And there's a column called Barron's Mentions. And any ticker symbol that's anywhere in Barron's, it, should, it does a basically a scrub, and then it gives you a briefing of that. So if you own like Blackstone, and it says Blackstone's about to buy um, a Bellagio or something, then you'll see exactly that. So it's a way to digest that whole thing very quickly. Um, well, CCX was in there as they have, they're building capital. I think they had 650 million or something that they've already built up, and they were, they're going for a billion. Uh, and so they're in that capital raising mode, and the only one that actually makes sense, Barron's didn't mention Top Golf, but that was what everybody was talking about in the chat rooms on yesterday. And then an article came out about it of how this is a perfect match. So there was enough for me there to say that yeah, this is going to happen. Um, and Top Golf has been talking about IPOing for a long time, so. So it's kind of that natural marriage uh, that's coming up. And these things have done nothing but make money. Obviously, DraftKings uh, came out at 11, and it went all the way to 45. Um, and so it sold off down to 30. Now it's at 37. So uh, definitely want to catch the wave on this as well. I would imagine this would probably be a fourth quarter type of, type of thing. So there's no, I don't think there's any way it would happen um, this soon, but could move off into the, uh, the fourth quarter there. All right, let's take a look at the short names before we go back to the other screen or what's uh, what's selling off sorry uh, Shopify down a few percent there trade desk down clickstream down Amazon down a little bit Netflix down Palo Alto so not very many names down overall which is good and not any one uh, really tanking like yesterday Nicola was down 20 percent um, off of that stock issuance so let's go back to the long names 
She was on the leaderboard. Luckin, number six on the leaderboard. I like it. Okay, let's go back to the uh, trading charts and we'll close out for the day. So my trade ended up in the red, so I get no credit for winning, just get to be yet another loser. Um, so it did not work as far as a trade. So no winners there, not even me. Okay, but I do like uh, CCX on the day. I like the entry point here. I'm not, uh, not that worried about it. And I get a big X of shame because I run the room. All right, um, that's it for today. Let me check to see if I have anything else. Yes, the X of shame. I like it. It's good t-shirts. Um, I do want to, we're going to go back to Google a minute. I want to take you to bond definitions. Uh, just kind of finish up some bond, uh, bond talk. Okay, again, this is Investopedia. We'll bring what is a bond up to the top there. Perfect. Again, fixed income. This is literally, if you pulled out a piece of paper and wrote, I loan uh, General Electric $5,000. They're going to pay me 5% and you can have this money for 10 years. And they go, okay, I'll buy that. That's literally it. Uh, the difference to, for you to get your head around is that the bond market is six times bigger than the stock market. Okay, stock market's huge. So the bond market is six times, you know, I like to make up words, huger than stock market. So that's kind of crazy when you think of what's out there. Um, and when they issue it, the difference is this, had, this goes away at some point. Okay, the bond goes away. So when you sell options, which again is not our topic today, but every time you sell an option, it has an ex a maturity date, an expiration date on it, right? So it goes away at some point. You buy a share of Apple, you hold it forever. That's like investing 101. That's like, how hard is this stuff? But the, with a bond, it goes away. So you buy it for a specific reason because you want all those payments to come in. And if they call it back early, you're kind of like peeved because I didn't buy it to get my money back right away. It's like, I want you to hold the money. I want you to pay me 5% over time. I'm not trying to get rich in bonds, but I am trying to protect my capital. So that's why they're so perfect out there. Uh, it's an agreement between an IOU and a lender. Um, what we did see is as soon as the Fed, who's in a bond buying spree right now, said that they were going to buy up investment grade bonds, what do companies do? They issued a whole bunch of bonds. So the bond market got even bigger, uh, kind of at the wrong time, but there's nothing that can legally stop them from doing it. So um, interesting times we live in. But for the most part, if you have bonds in your portfolio, they're back to about what they were worth pre-COVID. So the big dip, which I'd never seen before in individual bonds, is, has basically recovered. Okay, let's look at what we have. You can have variable or floating interest rate bonds. I would not touch anything like that, like I don't touch variable mortgages. No, I want to lock into a contract. Uh, you know, whether I'm right or I'm wrong, I want what I want, and boom, I agree to it, and we're off to we're off to the races. All right, maturity dates. We talked about that. Let's go ahead and scroll up. Uh, issuers of bonds. Again, those are governments, corporations, municipalities, anybody. School school uh, districts can issue bonds. You'll make next to nothing on those. So if you buy those, you're basically just going, I support the school. Um, but that's not a uh, how you make money. You can feel good about yourself. Um, Bonds can be issued to grow their business. That's kind of, if you see that in the middle there at, at, the, uh, at the underlined hyperlink. Yeah, that's what it's for. Now, what did ExxonMobil do? They issued a bunch of bonds in April to be able to pay their dividend. It's like, boo, that's not what they're supposed to be doing, but they can, and they've got the balance sheet to do it. So in other words, they had the cash to pay the dividend, but why pay the cash, which is your war chest, why not borrow money to pay the dividend? Again, you wouldn't operate your house like that, but you can with a company for, to a certain extent. All right, let's scroll down, put par at the top there. You can see um, par usually $100 or $1,000 face value. That's where I talked about. So when you check your bond portfolio, all you're doing is where is it in relation to 100? You know it's gonna be 100 on maturity date, so you really don't care. Yes, you do, because that's why I get called. It's why is my bond down at $94? And I try to say, well, you don't care because it's going to 100 in five years from now. That's a kind of a hollow answer to somebody when they call. So I don't try to say it that, and I certainly don't uh, say it that flippantly, but it's true. So don't worry about it. Um, but people do in the meantime. If you were to trade it today, you'd be taking a loss on that bond. So don't trade it today. 
kids, that's the lesson. Um, and when you do individual bonds, you don't have just individual bonds in your portfolio. You do keep some other stuff in bond funds as well, or equities to be able to, if all of a sudden you needed $100,000, you simply just sell off something else. The bonds would be the last to go. All right, we'll go to characteristics and then I'll close out for the day. So face value is what it's worth at major, uh, maturity. So most bonds are at $1,000 face value. So if you have 20 of them, that's $20,000. Coupon rate is simply the interest rate that the company is paying you. Coupon dates generally six months, but it could be any interval. Some are annually, some are monthly. Maturity date is when it goes away and the issue price is basically 100 if that's issued. Now, if you were to issue a 1% bond today, like a school board issues these really terrible bonds from an investing perspective, um, you would not pay $100 for a 1% bond. That would be idiotic. So they end up getting only like $95 for it because of the low interest rate. So, all right. And then last thing to talk about is the credit rating, credit quality, all of that. That's what needs to hold. So companies that are investment grade need to kind of stay investment grade. That's what we've seen the fallen angels going into COVID is that some of them fell out of that investment grade. So again, ETFs have to drop them, that sort of thing. They'll get promoted back up eventually into investment grade and then get snapped back up. So that's kind of the life cycle of the bond market. So uh, thanks for checking in this morning, everybody. We'll go back and the Dow is up over a percent. Um, S&P is up half a percent. And NASDAQ's actually in the red. So some of the tech names are selling off after the big move up yesterday. So that's all I've got for today. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.